just called her. Fantastic. Thank you. Great. Yay. Thank you, Tori. Yeah. Uh -huh. So sorry, I'm coming on right at the last minute. <laughs> You're fine. Good morning. You're fine. Good morning. Is it Judy or Julie? It's uh, Julie. Julie. Okay. Let me read. Hey, Judy. Yeah. The, well, I've seen both, and I think there was an accidental typo on. Um, so I do that. I renamed. It. Sorry. Okay. Julie, before we get started, we just want to make sure you're able to um, log into Go Venture Dash and pull up the rubrics and everything. Let me try to do that right now. All right. Um. See, I'm looking in my email for Venture Dash. You probably would have signed up already. I think we saw you in there. So you could go to goventuredash.com and then log in. Mm -hmm. And that would um, pull you right to it. While you're doing that, I'm going to go ahead and get set up to kick us off. Yes, OK, I'm in. Okay. And where should I go once I'm in? Um, if you click on the hazard competition, there will be like a component too that says live pitch. And then we will announce for each of the judges the team that will be pitching before. So you just pull their rubric up at that time. Got it. Okay, great. I'm in. Well, thank you. Well, we'll go ahead and start. Um, so hi, everyone. Welcome to our fourth of four pitch contests as part of the esteemed pitch series this week. We have one more next week in North Carolina and it's just been really rewarding. Um, we're really excited to wrap up this week with Hazard Community and Technical College. And um, we wanna go ahead and do a quick introduction of our lovely point of contact there and the judges that we'll be working with today and the team. So just a background, um, my name is Amber Ravenscroft. I'm the esteemed program manager and this is part of an Appalachian Regional Commission funded grant program to bring middle and high school entrepreneurship education to educators and students throughout a seven state region. So it's a little bit of background on the project. Um, wanted to say hello. And I'd love for Laura McCall to go ahead and just wave and say hello as the regional director for this initiative as well. And with that- Hi hey guys, thank you for being here. Thanks, Laura. Um, and Laura has done a fantastic job working with our local community colleges and education service agencies who make this possible in that seven state region. So Sandy, I'd love for you to introduce yourself on behalf of Hazard and talk a little bit about your role in the project and the teams and judges we have here today. Okay, well, good morning, everyone. Um, I am Sandy Campbell. I'm the Workforce Solutions Liaison for Hazard Community and Technical College. And we are so excited to welcome everyone today. And on behalf of our president, Dr. Linden and the college, we just wanna say a big welcome. We are um, so excited to see all the teams competing today. Wanna to welcome the teams. We um, know that you've done so much hard work and effort and uh, we just truly wish you all the good, all the luck in the world as we, as we see your pitches today. Um, we'd also like to uh, introduce, uh, which Amber already did a little bit, uh, Amber, the manager for, of innovation for the Adventure Group and the Easting Power Grant Project Manager. It's through her work with Adventure that, um, you know, this pitch competition is now a reality. We're so excited to, for the college uh, to be a part of this. Also like to say a big thank you to NACI, uh, National Association for Community College Entrepreneurship for their funding and support. Um, so welcome teams. We know you've done so much hard work and can't wait to see the pitches, so excited. Um, also want to welcome our judges today, uh, Julie Siegel with Girl Scouts of the USA, Mandy Scheffel, owner of Reed Spotted Newt, and Josanne Johnson, uh, Project Director of Appalachian Manufacturing here at the college. Thank you all so much for being a part of this today to judge our contest. We consider it a privilege to have you all joining us today. So we're excited, here's to a great and fun pitch competition. And once again, good luck to all our teams. And with that being said, Amber, I'll turn it back over to you to get us started. Awesome. Thank you. So quick logistics on how this is going to work. Each team will have five minutes to pitch. I believe we have the, the majority of the teams in one location, which makes it really seamless for us, makes it easy for them to transition in and out. Um, so at five minutes, you will have um, kind of two different parameters here. There will be a one minute warning where if you look for me, I'll just go ahead like this. So I'll put on 
put my hand up. That's your one minute warning. At five minutes and 10 seconds, we'll go ahead and mute um, just to keep things on track. If you go over that five minute pitch, there will be a two point deduction on your final score. So please keep that in mind. We do encourage some um, somebody locally with you to also have a timekeeper there just so you can keep a second set of eyes. After that five minute pitch, we'll go into a three minute Q&A. We would love for the judges to provide constructive feedback, ask questions and give some positive opportunities for these companies to grow. Um, that's really key. And so we really would love questions and feedback from the judges um, each round if possible. And then after that three minute Q&A, we'll go ahead and have the judges submit their scores and we will let the on deck team know to get ready, share their screen um, and get all squared away. And then we will announce the next pitch. So you can keep an eye out for me. And then as um, my colleague, Jennifer Watring logs in, she will take over the moderation of the timing. Um, she did have a presentation this morning, but for now I will go ahead and kick us off with the, the timing and the moderation of the teams. So today's pitches, um, they'll be going in this order. We have Betterment with Bates. That is our only pitch um, outside of the one classroom. So we'll go ahead and have him set up here soon. Branston Movie Star Photography, Cherished Memories, Grocery Guys Delivery Service, Kicking COVID Mask Company, Sneaky Snacks, and Teacher's Pets. And with that, I'm going to go ahead and we'll, I'll go back to the um, communications at the back end. But Caleb, do you want to go ahead and get all set up for Betterment with Bates? And we will keep this right on track here. And then so judges, go ahead and pull up the Betterment with Bates rubric. I forgot to unmute before I shared my screen, so I had to go out of the slideshow there. Can you all see my screen okay? Yes, go ahead and present. Wonderful, can you hear me okay too? Yes, sir. All right. Okay. So whenever, hold on, let me, get my, let me get my stopwatch up before I tell you to go. <laughs> okay. All right, whenever you are ready, I will go ahead and start. Okay, go ahead and start. Okay. So the name of my business is Betterment with Bates and I am Wallace Caleb Bates, I'm the owner. So why did I open my business? Well, um, over the course of the past year, we've seen the impact that COVID-19 has had on education. And, you know, we know that the COVID-19 pandemic's onset raised a lot of concerns. It left people with a lot of questions and it negatively impacted students, especially. I know that the events that have happened over the course of the last year have really left teachers with a great burden to bear just as it left students with a great burden to bear. And so I opened my business to help lift those burdens, to provide students with um, an individualized and tailored tutoring experience. So who is my target customer? Well, I tutor students who need help with their English coursework, um, specifically students in grades seven through 12. And um, with that, I feel I'm well equipped to do so. Um, I have, as a dual credit student, I've taken classes that relate directly back to the field of education. So I have an idea of how to deliver content and information to students. And then also, I feel I'm able to work well with young people. And so with that, how do I advertise and what are my advertising costs? Well, um, first of all, teachers agreed to share information about my services in their Google Classroom streams. And of course that cost was free. Um, and then also I purchased supplies for flyers. My family allows me to use their printer for a fee of $5 each week. Um, and then I typically spend $6 per pack of printer paper. Um, and then in total, just to give a rough estimate, printing 20 flyers would cost around 24 cents when it comes to um, the paper. So there are 500 sheets. Um, per pack of paper. And so with that, I look for um, affordable options and yeah, to move on. What other costs do I have? Um, so of course, Betterment with Bates is authorized to use a classroom at BHS, the local high school um, for three days a week, um, Monday, Tuesdays and Thursdays from 3.30 until 6.30. And um, I must purchase cleaning supplies to disinfect all surfaces. And that's roughly $2.99 for 35 wipes. Once again, I look for a bargain with that. 
And then also I purchase masks to help keep students safe. And um, I do buy quality masks. So roughly $15 for 12 masks. Those estimates are just to give um, an idea of how much those supplies cost. And of course, with the classroom that I use, I'm not charged a fee. And so I do have contracts here. Um, you can see that I have a contract with my principal um, giving me permission to use room 239. Um, as I said, from Mondays or on Mondays, Tuesdays and Thursdays from 3.30 until 6.30 p.m. And so um, I'm responsible for disinfecting and ensuring that social distancing and other CDC recommendations are followed. Um, and then also I have a contract that I have parents and guardians fill out. And essentially this contract allows um, my business and, and me to communicate with education stakeholders to help ensure that I am um, giving students the, the best opportunity to succeed. And so in a given week, um, the amount of money I make, it varies depending on um, really the cost of supplies for that week. And so it fluctuates um, depending on the last time that I purchased supplies and whatnot. So I can make anywhere between $60 per week and $90 per week. And so with that, why would I choose Betterment with Bates? Why should consumers choose Betterment with Bates? Well, as I listed here, there are a lot of reasons. Um, first of all, my business is relatively small, which is actually in turn a blessing because I only serve a limited number of people. And so with that, I feel I'm able to really tailor an experience, whereas larger competitors, um, virtual platforms, for example, they're not able to do that in the same way that I am. Um, and I really enjoy being able to work with that small group. And I feel like I'm able to communicate well with teachers. So that sort of is a segue into my next reason. Um, I know the teachers, as, a, as someone from a small community, I know a lot of the teachers who, the students that I tutor have in class. And so I have a great connection with them. And so, in, uh, so yeah, and I feel like I've done well in my classes in the past, so I'm well equipped. Great, thank you. Okay, we're gonna go ahead and enter our three minute round with our judges. So um, judges, any questions for Caleb and Betterman with Bates? My question is, what is your, your target number of students that you have that you're trying to, um, uh, you know, what is your goal as far as number of students? And then what is what are you charging per student or per, are you, is it per hour, per half hour? How, how, how are you, um, you know, how, how is your, 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 how are your fees set up? Right. So um, first, let me say that as I projected there in the, in the PowerPoint, um, it depends. I roughly make 60 to $90 a week. And so to break that down, I have three students who I tutor and I tutor those students for three days per week at $10 per hour. So um, typically, you know, I'll make $90 per week before the cost of supplies. And so as I said, there is, um, you know, a, it, it's a small, it's a smaller group. And is that, is that your target um, number of customers? Do you have, do you have a, a, a target number that you're looking to reach? Right. Well, um, I, I do. I would prefer to keep my business on the smaller side, and and I say that because, as I you know, as I said earlier, I feel that really allows me to individualize and tailor each experience. Oh, and so in terms of a specific number, um, as of right now, three is, allows me to do that. However, as my business grows, um, I, I would be willing to target up to twelve, just depending on. Um, the needs of each individual student. Thank you. Mandy or Julie, any other questions? I just have a quick question and comment. Um, I like the fact that your um, business is in person. I think that element uh, is a selling point for parents whose kids have been in front of a screen for most of the year. Um, but I'm thinking in terms of competitors, are there is there any competition in the area uh, that you're aware of? Actually, um, no, not that I'm aware of, because um, of course the pandemic had, from a number in a number of ways, it had a great impact on the functioning of after-school programs in the community. 
And so um, as of right now, I am the only business offering this service. And actually um, I had, uh, I feel like I should mention that for parents and students who feel better um, receiving that tutoring service online, I am willing to work with them through Google Meet. And of course, you know, given the nature of the pandemic and just really the um, inability to be sure what each week is gonna bring in terms of quarantines and whatnot, um, Google Meet is always an option. Great, thank you. Julie, we probably have enough time for one more quick comment or question. Great, um, I would say I really like the design of your presentation. It comes across as very um, clean and professional. And um, I would encourage you to think about scalability. Um, I know you like saying you like to keep it small, but um, I think that there's you know, potentially a lot of room for growth. And so thinking about how can you reach more students, you know, could you work with a network of tutors if you really, uh, if you wanted to expand the business? My question is if you have any proof points to share about the effectiveness of your services, um, have your students, you know, on average increased their test scores a certain amount, um, or do you have any testimonials from, from students you've worked with in the past or current students? So I did not include that information in my PowerPoint. Um, I will say that the students that I've tutored so far, they've had some great success. So um, I would estimate the average student that I tutor began with um, below a 60%. And most of my students are now um, moving into the, the B range. And so we're continuing to work on that. Um, when it comes to testimonials, I like to think that each individual that I tutor would, would recommend my services because as I said, you know, I really do um, individualize and, and tailor the experience. And with that, um, I'm really passionate about it. And so um, I dedicate a lot of time and effort to doing so. So thank you. Great. Thank you, Caleb. Um, thank you, Betterment with Bates. So judges, go ahead and submit your scores in Venture Dash. And we have Branston's movie star photography um, next. So we can go ahead and get him set up. Thank you all. Thank you. And then um, for just for a note, cherished memories will be on deck after Branson's movie star photography. And then Sarah, whenever you're ready to turn on your video, I'll go ahead and spotlight that so that the judges can see the, um, the pitch as well. Video and audio and your audio. Great. Give us just a minute. Give us just a minute. I'll let you know when to go so the judges can submit their scores. Okay. All right, judges, about one more minute to submit your scores, and then we're going to go ahead and start the next pitch. Amber, I have a question about the scoring. Sure. Um, are we able to adjust scores at the very end to make sure that they're calibrated across yes. all businesses? Yes, you'll be able to go back in and adjust and add additional comments. We just okay. ask for them to be um, adjusted pretty promptly so we can make the announcements in the, the last round here. Got it. Thank you. You're very welcome. All right, judges, um, we're going to go ahead and have Brant start. Brant, keep an eye out for my one minute warning, okay? And you're good to go. Whenever you start, I'll start the clock.
Malcolm Brandt from Brandt's Memory Star Photography. I'm the owner, artist, and photographer for this business. I'm in the sixth grade and I go to Jackson City School. I've loved art from a very young age. I love to draw, paint, color, and any kind of art you can imagine. Just recently, I've got started to love the art of photography. And Brands Movie Star Photography has allowed me to combine two things I'm very, very passionate about. What is Brands Movie Star Photography, you may be asking. Brands Movie Star Photography is a business I own where I make custom backdrops for what you want and wherever you want. And with my trusty camera, I'll take your picture. There's a high demand for my business because parents love to have pictures of their kids. Well, at least mine do. My main target audience to sell brands with star photography is K through sixth grade in Breathitt County for parents, adults, sports team, and any other special occasions. The problem is there are no other local photographer that offers backdrops like mine. The solution I've created is I will design custom backgrounds for my customers and all for a reasonable price. And also, all the photos I take are instantly printed. There aren't many other people doing the same service as me and making special backgrounds. Also, they may be using old ones over and over again. That's going to get boring sometimes. Marketing. I plan to market my business through social media like Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, and Snapchat. And I may market my business through the newspaper. I plan for my business to have a strong word of mouth. I'll be relying on my customers to tell their friends, neighbors, and family about the good experience they had with my business. And then the people they tell will become my customers. This is the conclusion of my financials. The cost I'll be needing for my business are pencils, markers, posters, paint, and camera film. The prices I will be using for my business are, if you want your picture with one of the custom backdrops I design, it's going to be $24.99. And if you want your picture with no backdrop, it's going to be $19.99. And if you just want to rent the backdrop to take your own picture or for decoration, it's going to be $99.99. This is the conclusion of my presentation. I hope you all enjoyed my presentation. Now I will leave the floor open to any questions you may have. Or if you like, I could book you for an appointment. Be sure to tell me the backdrop you want and I'll create it. Great. Thank you so much. Judges, we're going to go ahead and go into our Q&A round, and we um, ended up a little early, so we do have a little bit more time for questions on this for this pitch. So any questions from the judges? I'll start with a question. Um, hi, Brant. I, I love the creativity in your pitch, and um, it's very very true that so many pictures, you know, have the same blank background. So I love the idea of something, you know, a little, a little different. Um, I'm curious if you have any um, example photos of, of backgrounds that you've created before, or um, if this is really just an idea, then is there any additional market research that you have with parents who are saying, you know, yes, absolutely, I would sign up for this idea. Yeah, here's one of the backdrops I've created. Beautiful. Thank you. And um, I'll just ask one more follow-up question. Um, are you planning to take the photos on a digital camera or on a film camera? Or could the customer choose which kind of photo they want? I have a Polaroid camera of my own that I take my pictures with. Sorry, what did you say, Polaroid? Yeah. Great, thank you. Uh, I have a question on your financials. Um, <clears throat> you said that um, your cost would be uh, $24.99 with the backdrop and $19.99 without the backdrop. So I guess my question is about what is the cost of producing the, the backdrop such as the one that you showed us? I used markers and pencils and most of my markers dried out so I had to buy new ones. Mm -hmm. So it took about five dollars for all the stuff. Um, <clears throat> if this was um, 
a six, if if your business were, were to take off and you were making multiple um, backdrops in a week, is that five dollars difference in price enough to um, cover your costs for both your time in making the backdrop and your um, expense and markers, paper, all of those other other things? Yeah, I think it will be enough. Okay, thank you. Okay, Mandy, any questions? And then we'll go ahead and get the next pitch ready. Sure, hey, Brant. Um, I think it's an excellent idea. Um, I know um, a lot of adults even use a photo booth style um, photographer for their events. So I think having this for children, I think it's a great idea. Uh, the backdrop is beautiful and um, I guess my question is, I also were, was concerned about the cost. Was the cost associated? Did that line up with your pricing? Uh, but also, um, do you have a specific area that you plan on servicing? Are you going to keep it in uh, local or, or try to expand? And how will that affect your marketing? Yeah, I'll try to stay local. Great, thank you. So our next pitch on deck is Cherished Memories. You can go ahead and get set up. And then we have Grocery Guys Delivery Service right after them. Judges, go ahead and please submit your scores for Brant um, in Venture Dash. And thank you, Brant, for your time. And then I do wanna introduce um, my colleague, Jennifer Watkins. She will be taking over with moderating. So um, Jen, if you wanna give a wave. Hi. I'm gonna make you host so that you are spotlighted for everyone and okay. then um, that will be that will be who you look at moving forward. My video might not be very reliable throughout, so that is better for us altogether. Um, and um, Amber, yes, I hate to report, but we have a sickness with cherished memories, so they're not going to be here today. Okay, it's, it's unavoidable. I'm sorry. No worries. Okay, so grocery guys delivery service. Then you are up, and then on deck you will have Kicking COVID Mask Company. And I hope that they get better or feel better, Tori. Thank you for letting us know. And then Jen, you're all set, correct? Do you need anything else on my end before? No, I was just gonna ask you, are they all presenting from Sarah or Tori's? Yes, now they are. We The first one was not, but we've moved. Okay. We've switched. Okay. okay. Sounds good. Just hold one second until we confirm whether the judges have their scores in and then we'll let you know when to go. And then Jen, you're, you're all set? Yep, I got you. Okay. Okay, judges, you should hopefully have your scores and comments submitted. Um, next up, we have Grocery Guys Delivery Service. So Grocery Guys, if you would like to begin, go ahead. Uh, hi, I'm Micah, I'm Drew, and um, we are Grocery Guys Delivery Service. Last year, whenever COVID was in heat, we noticed a lot of people were scared to go out and buy groceries due to the risk of buying, of catching COVID. Um, and that's where we kind of had the idea to start this business um, and offer a contactless way to get groceries to you during this pandemic. Um, we kind of started out working with the elderly, um, with our grandparents first, delivering groceries to them because we figured it would be better for us to get COVID than them because they're at a higher risk. And then we kind of realized that 
we could try and make money off of it and offer our service to other people. Um, so that's where this kind of started. And now we're kind of delivering to anyone, but we would rather it be to someone who's in a risk. Yeah, and really only the really the only other alternative um, is to risk getting COVID and buying groceries in person. So I feel like we are a niche service. And it's very beneficial to our customers because it allows them to stay safe along with getting their groceries. And um, we will actually bring your groceries to your doorstep and leave them there for you, no contact. Um, and the paying will also be contactless through Venmo. In terms of distribution, we plan to market our service through Facebook and putting flyers up around town. Um, for our fee, we do charge a $10 delivery fee and um, we deliver on Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays. Um, we usually get around eight to 10 deliveries each day. So that's about, we're saying roughly 85, $80 along with tips. Um, so on the weekly average, we're getting about um, $240 somewhere around there. And um, we're spending money to fill up our cars with gas. So we're taking about $60 out of our profit. So our weekly profit is about $180. In terms of startup costs, we both already have gas efficient cars. And really the only other thing we need is a website in order for customers to place orders. And with our goal of making a safe contactless way for you to buy groceries, our safety is also in mind. So we will be wearing masks 100% of the time and using hand sanitizer frequently in our cars upon picking up the groceries and delivering them. That's about it. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much. Judges, questions? I can go ahead and start off. Um, okay, thank thanks you. Thanks, guys. I guess my, my first question, I have a couple, but I, as vaccinations become more widespread, how will this affect your business? And do you have a plan for adjustment, uh, say, post-COVID? Um, Post-COVID, well, I still feel like even if it if, if COVID hadn't started, people would still enjoy having their deli um, groceries delivered to them. That they would it would save them time from having to take time out of their day and go out to the grocery store and spend an hour or so. And um, along with that, um, if you do not go to the grocery store, you're not as likely to spend as much money because of impulse buying and factors like that. Agreed, totally. And are there any um, competitors in the area that you're aware of? No, we have no competitors. We're the only people uh, providing the service in the county. Great, thanks. My question is, um, how large is your service area and how did you define it? Can you repeat that? I didn't hear you very good. <clears throat> oh, I'm sorry. How large is your service area and how did you define um, the area, your geography that you're going to cover? Okay, well, right now we're just doing the city limits in Jackson, but um, hopefully as we continue to grow, we can possibly get a few more delivery um, guys to help us and maybe spread out, venture out farther into the county. Have you found that your clients are, um, you said that originally it started with your grandparents and, and elderly um, people that you knew. Have you seen the demographic of your clients change over time? Um, yeah, a little bit, but not a whole lot really. I mean, majority of our customers are elderly, but I mean, now it's kind of reaching to where more younger people are doing it, but I mean, yeah, it has changed in a way, but not really. So you, you've kept your, your base of older people, but you're starting to add newer people into, into the mix. Yes. That's excellent. 
I think this is a great idea and there's definitely a clear need um, during during COVID, but I really liked your answer to Mandy's question about how do you continue the service, you know, even after everyone's vaccinated, it's definitely a convenience that, that you would provide, um, especially if, if people are short on time or, you know, can't get to the grocery. Um, my question is, how do you advertise and, and get new customers? We plan to advertise on Facebook through ads and uh, commercials, but we plan Oh, also in the newspaper, having ads in the newspaper. And we also plan to uh, put flyers up around town. Great. And have you gotten any referrals from current customers who have um, shared with other people to say, oh, I discovered the grocery guys. They delivered, you know, my groceries to me and I recommend them. Yes, we actually have. We've had um, a couple customers said they've been told about our service by another customer. That's great. Okay, thank you very much. So judges, if you will please submit your scores. Thank you, Grocery Guys. Um, up next is going to be Kicking COVID Mask Company and then Sneaky Snacks will be on deck. Okay, judges, if you have everything submitted, we will have Kicking COVID Mask Company. And then Sneaky Snacks, you're on deck. In COVID masks, are you there? Where are you? <laughs> Let's give them just a sec. They have it up. <laughs> yeah. Sarah, <laughs> I wonder if they can hear me. They probably can. In the meantime, I do want to um, maybe make a point for the judges that around two over the last three competitions and including this one, as part of round one, we gave some very structured feedback and comments and 
I just want to say and congratulate the students for taking those comments into account. That has definitely been something that we've seen across the board that the teams have really learned from the first comments. So, okay, I think they're here, Jen. I was filling Yay! some time. <laughs> Thanks for filling that time, Amber. Okay, now we have Kicking COVID Mask Company. You can go Hello, ahead. My and name is Josh Moore, and I'm a junior at Jackson Independent School. And I'm 17 years old. And over the summer, I created a company called Kicking COVID Masks. Kicking COVID Masks is a company that creates custom Jackson City School masks themed masks. The problem today is that we are in a global pandemic, and we are required to wear masks. Now that we've come back to in-person school, we have to wear masks in school. And I realized that all these other schools had masks with their logos on them, but we did not have ours. So I created a mask that had Jackson City School logos. I created a mask that not only protected us, but also had our school logo and demonstrated school spirit. My goal is to have Jackson City School masks for students, teachers, alumni, staff, and other family members. The masks I created are CDC approved cloth masks that are comfortable to wear, washable, and adjustable. I plan on distributing them with online order forms, sales via social media, during parent or open house night, and they also are sold in the school office during school hours. The revenue that I made was $12 per mask, and I bought the masks for $6.50, so I made a profit of $5.50. There was no startup needs. They said that I would I would pay for them with the order, the money that I collected from my orders. Thank you. Any questions? Okay, thank you. Judges, questions? Yes, I have a question. Are you wearing one of your masks right now? Yes, ma'am. Can you come closer to the camera so we can get a good look at it? Aha, uh -huh, very nice, Jackson City Tigers. And I'm curious, did you design um, the mask yourself? Yes, ma'am. Amazing. Um, I'm curious, do you plan to have any different types of designs or is it one standard design for the school? There's three different designs. I only have one with me at the moment. I have one that is gold that has the JC logo. And I also have one that's black that says Jackson Tigers. Amazing. Um, well, I love the school spirit, and it's certainly a need during this time, you know, when you're thinking about uh, a product that everyone is going to be buying. So um, I think you're definitely in, in the right space right now. Um, I'm curious how you how you sell them. Is there a website that people buy them on or do they have to get them from you in person? There's a website they can get them on and we, um, we can mail them to them or if they would like to meet in person, that they can do that. Wonderful. Have you considered reaching out to other small businesses and offering them um, your services to design a specific mask for them? Yes, I have. Um, whenever, if the pandemic keeps going on and whenever I, I go to college, I plan on um, making more masks maybe for the college or like you said, small businesses. Thank you. Mandy, do you have a question? Um, just to kind of reiterate what others have said, I really like the school spirit. I think um, having to wear a mask at school all day um, 
can be a challenge. And I think adding the aspect of school spirit helps um, the morale for everybody in school. So I commend you for that and recognizing that need. Are there any competitors? And yeah. also um, going forward, do you plan on creating any more designs? Yes, I do plan on creating more designs in the future. And there are no competitors. Great, thank you. Thank you. I have, I have one more question if we have time. Sure. Um, what is the website where we can buy a mask? Jackson ID. Sorry, say, say that again. Our Jackson ID on net to our school website. Great. All right. I will. I'm on here right now and I will poke around and see if I can find them. Uh, thank you. Okay, thank you very much, Kicking COVID Masks. Judges, if you will submit your scores and comments, we have Sneaky Snacks up next, and then we will wrap up with Teacher's Pets. So Sneaky Snacks, go ahead and get ready. Okay, judges all finished, thumbs up, ready? Okay, great. All right, Sneaky Snacks, you are up. And then remember after this will be Teacher's Pets. Hi, my name is Addison and today I'll be talking about my business called Sneaky Snacks. Last year, I noticed a problem. Kids can't eat in class without getting in trouble. And it's scientifically proven that students that eat more in class do better on tests. Our solution to this problem is Sneaky Snacks. Sneaky Snacks is a business that designs and creates products that will help students sneak snacks in class. We talked to some teachers and administration at our school and convinced them that we weren't trying to make their life harder by creating this business and coordinated a cell time with them that wouldn't disrupt class. We also shared research about how hunger can impact learning. Our target market is kids K through six, but we plan on spreading the word about our business and possibly branching out to other schools. A competitive advantage is that no other business in our area sells the same products we do and our school no longer sells snacks due to COVID. Our marketing strategy is hanging up flyers, making commercials about our business, and
and discussing about our business on the morning announcements. Our distribution strategy is taking orders during the during lunch in the cafeteria, and the next day we bring a rolling cart with sanitized and packaged goods and pass them out to whoever, to whoever ordered them. And our recycled materials are donated in a tote next to the office and are quarantined before two, for two weeks. Last year, we made a total of $200, and this year, we're projected to make between $225 and $250. That's all. Do you have any questions? Okay, thank you, Sneaky Snacks. Judges, questions? Um, I love the research that you shared. You mentioned that you found research about how hard it is for kids to study when they're hungry, and that is totally true for me. It's hard for me to work when I'm hungry. So um, I, like, I like that uh, aspect of your business. Um, I'm curious, I'm not sure I totally understand what the snacks are. Um, could you talk a little bit more about what the ingredients are and, and how they're made and, you know, are they sneaky because you can eat them in class and they don't have plastic wrappers so they don't make noise or, or tell me more about the product. We um, actually made a pencil holder and there's a compartment in it and you can um, lift the compartment up and get the snacks out. And then we also made a glue stick or we cut the back out of one of these glue containers and you can lift it up and get candy out of that and then we have another glue stick and you can pull the candy out of it Any other questions? Very clever. And so the, the the snacks inside is like candy that you would buy at the grocery store. And so then you package it specially in these containers. Is that right? Yes. Great. Thank you. Next question. You, were, you you mentioned donations. Are the donations the containers or are they the, the snacks that you're putting in the containers? Um, our donations are, well, we make the pencil holders out of crinkle pens and then we make the glue sticks out of, or we use the glue sticks that have already been used and we clean them out. Um, do you know how much you make per unit on the snacks that you're 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 selling? Um, I don't know. Let's see. We normally make around three to five dollars. That's excellent. Okay. Thank you. Any questions, Mandy? Uh, yeah, I, also I think this is an excellent idea and I love the research too. Uh, I, think that's a, I think that's a selling point for parents and teachers alike. Um, I think one of my questions was how do you plan on marketing? How do you plan on getting the word out? And what is the cost for the student? What's your average price of a, of a snack? And I, I guess, is this a daily thing or are you only doing it certain days a week? I think we'll only be doing it certain days a week and the prices range from three to five or three to ten dollars. And how did you plan on um, getting the word out? How are you going to let students and more importantly, parents know about your services? We normally discuss it on the morning announcements and we have a few flyers hanging up around school. Great, thanks. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Sneaky Snacks. Judges, if you will submit 
and teacher's pets, if you will get ready. Okay, judges, are you, everything submitted? Okay. All right, now we have um, teachers, pets. So teachers, pets, go ahead and begin. Hello, I'm Karen, this is Sammy, and here's Dad. We have a service inside of our school called Teachers Pets. Teachers Pets is a cleaning service where we go around and thank our kitchen customers for money. This is our third year of doing Teacher's Pets. We noticed that our business is a greater need in our school this year because it is very hard to be safe where it's properly sanitized. Because of the virus known as COVID, there is a greater demand for our business because we have to keep the people in our school and ourselves safe. The solution is simple, Teacher's Pets. Teacher's Pets has gone through extensive training by OSHA to be able to safely and thoroughly. Teacher's Pets has also donated our money to the nine letter program for the past two years, and we plan to start there again this year. We use the proper clothing and supplies to keep us and the people in our school safe. That's what we're all about. We have been hired by our school principal to clean our school, and our principal has signed a contract stating that we will be allowed to clean classrooms and offices. Our prices range from $15 to $20, $15 for our office spaces and $20 for classrooms. We're being paid by the hour. Teacher's Pets has been hired to clean four classrooms a week, making a total of $80 per week. The cleaning supplies that we use to clean our school are being supplied by our school and are certified to clean the coronavirus. We anticipate that our business will keep on going even as this virus is slowing down. We've still been hired for this year and next in before corona. And not to mention, it's always important to stay safe and clean. And that's our business, Teacher's Pets. Do you have any questions? Thank you, teachers, pets. Judges, any questions? Yeah, I have, uh, I've got one. I think this is an excellent idea. And I think as a parent of a, a child in the school system, I think this is a, a fabulous service and it would make me more comfortable knowing that a company like Teachers Pets was sanitizing the school. So I think it's a great idea. Um, you mentioned that at 15 to $20 an hour, you were averaging $80 a week. Um, what's your cost of goods? Um, your uniforms, your cleaning supplies? Uh, I'll take this one. Uh, 
our clothing has been supplied by a grant that we got and our cleaning supplies, like we said, is being supplied by our school. Excellent, thank you. Um, I'll hop in and say that I really like your logo. I think um, it is coordinated with your with your outfits and um, it feels like you guys are really taking it seriously. Um, so I think that there's potential for expansion. So I'm curious to learn if you've thought about expanding, um, is there more room to scale your business and clean more classrooms at Jackson City or have you ever thought about expanding to other schools? So what would that look like if you wanted to grow the business? If we have too much work and like we're all going to work, we'll consider expanding our business. My question is about marketing. How have you how have you marketed your business um, to attract new clients? I'll take this one. We posted flyers around our school and went to our principal directly and the teachers and asked them if they would hire our business. And which did you find more effective? The talking directly to people or flyers? Uh, talking directly to people. Okay, any other questions? Okay, teachers pets, thank you very much. Okay, judges, if you will get your score submitted. You're back. Hi, everybody. Yeah, sorry. Um, let's give it about five to 10 more minutes for the judges if you have any score updates and stuff. And then we will go ahead and make the announcements here um, live since we're a bit ahead of schedule. So hang with us. Um, we'll go ahead and give them some time to update their scores, put those comments in, and then we will make the announcement, let's say around 10 10, Jen, if that works. Amber, while well, I got some downtime, I just want to thank everybody. Um, Sandy, particularly for pulling this together and teams, Sarah and Tori, uh, awesome job, awesome job teams. It's been such a fun week for all of us. We've learned a lot. We've grown a lot through this and Amber and Jen, of course, thank you very much for the work and judges. Thanks for the new partnership. Always happy to have new partnerships. Great job. And same for me, I would just like to say, um, Thank you to all the judges. A um, couple of you I've not got to meet personally, but um, this has been awesome, uh, fun. So, so neat to see the creativity. Um, I loved it. So thank you judges for, for being willing to give up your schedule, like I mentioned earlier, to work with us today. And yeah, this was a team effort. This was, this was not, this was just definitely a team effort. And so um, kudos to everybody. It's been wonderful and the work that Sarah and Tori have done is obvious and just the the kids are it's just amazing I just I really loved it
feel like I should play the Jeopardy theme song. <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead, Jen. We're waiting. I don't have it. <laughs> it's okay because I can hear it in my head. I'm sure everybody else can. You're too. welcome. Everybody's going to be saying it the rest of the day. Okay. Hang on, the scores are all in. So let me go back in. Amber, we, if we have a tie for second, it's just first, second, third. Is that how you want to do that? Um, hold on, let me look. Do we have and one? We had a tie and another one, and we actually had then four teams. Like, yeah, Jen, do we have one right now based on the? Yeah, it's all the scores are in. So all the judges are good. Sandy, I guess I'll ask you, and I don't want to put you on the spot here. Would you be comfortable with us doing the same amount for second place if there's two second place from the hazard funding? Yes. That's we did that with Roan. Okay. Okay. So Jen, you have them up and the judges have all their, there's no more edits to those? I'm going to double check, but I'm pretty sure. Scoring, no pending. And then, there. so... Down to my pitch. Yeah, if there's an exact score, we'll do the same prize amount um, that would originally be allocated to that score um, for both for both competing. Yeah, and what's funny is there. Um, it's probably by decimal points still, right? <laughs> we had the same thing. Rome no, it's actually exact, and their overall score is exact. Okay. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Okay. If you're ready, right. the announcement. Yeah. Are they on still? Where'd they go? Uh, did they log off? <laughs> <laughs> All of that? <laughs> well, and why don't we make the announcement? Yeah, and then do it backwards, three, two, one. Okay. Yeah. Well, how are they gonna know? I don't know. Somebody's Let's get them back on. Can Amber, can we reach out to them? Hold yeah. on, let me invite. Let me see if it'll let me. Let me see. Amber, I think you said at 10 after, and so maybe they're oh. back in. Oh, yeah. Thank you, Justin. Oh. Now we really have this to is think for a little while. <laughs> <laughs> this is Corey. I'm still here. Oh, okay. Oh. okay. Did Sarah hop off? Yeah. yeah. Corey, do you want to get whoever you need in the room for you all since you're in the same location? Um, yes, I'll, I'm back in my classroom right now, but I'm going to try and get them. I'll, I'll get them back on. <laughs> Like as soon as possible. No <laughs> worries. We'll keep going until then. Right. I wonder if they could hear me if I tell you guys. Do not. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Cover your ears. You may not do that. <laughs> Let me see. So, um, Jennifer and Amber and Laura, where are you all based? Sandy, you're in Hazard, right? I am in West Virginia. I'm in North Carolina, Nashville. I'm in um, Chicago, Illinois. Currently, I am in Nashville. <laughs> <laughs> Amazing. Well, this is just so fun and such a cool idea. I grew up in, in Jackson and went to Jackson City, but I live in New York oh. City, so I'm in Manhattan. 
Oh, nice. Uh, My daughter's in Manhattan. Where are you, Julie? Oh, nice. I'm in Murray Hill, kind of near the Empire State Building. Yeah, okay. She's Upper East on 93rd. Yeah, oh. nice. We appreciate you all taking time. Um, you know, we've had a lot of incredible judges over the last couple of competitions and the amount of time it takes is definitely, I think, worth it to hear from the young minds that are coming out of Appalachia. So we're excited. Tori, does that mean? I love your back. Um, That's fun. Thank you. Um, they are getting back on as we speak. So okay. they're coming. <laughs> thank you. Oh. But just so you know, my third graders are very inspired after watching some of these. So it's been oh, awesome. Oh, good. <laughs> yeah, I hope Trip Shuffle is inspired to take over the family business. <laughs> um, Trip, Trip, is just, Trip is just over the moon right now. <laughs> is he in third grade? Yeah. Yes, Years. and he is, oh. he's made so uh Aww. he got to see his mom nice <laughs> that's cool <clears throat> Will we be allowed to give any kind of final words of encouragement to the group? Yes, please. We would encourage it. And we will be doing um, a fall competition. I, I should mention this uh, across the seven state region. So if you all have any interest in attending or um, I'm sure we'll also be looking for judges on that one. That one is certain to be a pretty tight competition if we have seven states submitting. So um, keep an eye out for information on that. We'd love to have you back. Some of these teams will probably also compete in that, just knowing that they have kind of a, another opportunity. So it'd be cool to see them grow. Absolutely. I wish we had stuff like this when I was growing up. I, I always say that I got my start in entrepreneurship selling Girl Scout cookies. Mm -hmm. because I, I sold over 10,000 boxes in oh, 12 years oh. at Girl Scout. So, uh, you know, Jackson only had a little one. metric to have in your yeah. back pocket. <laughs> yeah. I feel you, Julie. I had to be popcorn queen for the Boy Scouts for a couple of years. It's like, whoa. <laughs> yeah. 10,000 boxes in Jackson is impressive. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say, exactly. it's a little, a little baby city. I know I, I would stop people year after year, you know, over 12 years, I should say. It wasn't 10,000 in one year, but uh, I would have my loyal customers and um, send thank you notes to my big purchasers. So it was- That's a nice touch. <laughs> 10,000 in 12 years is still impressive if you yeah. think about what that breaks down to like annually. <laughs> Yeah, it was definitely very persistent. I also remember selling um, like little magnets and head scarves at the Honey Festival. My friend's mom and grandma had a quilting booth. And so they would give me a little spot on their table oh. to make or, and craft and sell at the Honey Festival. I could do that. And my dad and I grew tomatoes and, and sold them at the farmer's market. So there were all kinds of little entrepreneurial projects. Nice. All right, guys, I just logged Sarah back in, so it should be any second. They're getting all the students back down there, so perfect. We're getting there. Um, Mandy, I looked up your bookstore and it looks really awesome. Thank you. It's um, it was a trying first year, <laughs> to, to say the least. I opened, I opened in January of last year. Oh, wow. And it flooded immediately, like seven days in. And oh. then, um, of course, you know, opening a new business in the middle of a pandemic. Yeah. I think I'm going to cry. 
Starting with the flood. <laughs> but yeah, it was very emotional for sure. But I've had tons of community support. I think that just made the community support that much greater. So it nice. was inspiring. Good, good. I can imagine during COVID, there's not as much, not as many things to do. So maybe reading is, is up. This That's time. true. That's true. Book sales uh, were up um, definitely for this area because there are, there are no other bookstores. So, <laughs> and puzzles. I saw a lot of puzzles too. That makes sense. We're all here, guys. All right. Okay. Hey. Drum roll for Jen. I was gonna say, now I, I first I needed the um, Jeopardy, now I need a drum roll. Okay, we're going to actually, we had a tie for second place. And so um, Sandy was kind enough to allow us to give a total of four prizes out to um, the businesses. So thank you, Sandy, for that. And that's great news for everybody that's listening from the classroom. So I'm gonna go backwards. And so in fourth place, well, or third place, or whatever, <laughs> in third place, kind of, someone that's winning is Sneaky Snacks. Woo! Woo! Congratulations. In third place. Second, just say two seconds. <laughs> two seconds, okay. So second number one is the Grocery Guys Delivery Service. Good job. Second number two is Betterment with Bates. Good job. He's not on anymore, I don't think, but we'll he'll okay. get to watch it on the back end. And our grand prize winner is Teacher's Pets. Great. Good job, everyone. Congratulations. And um, just a quick note, I'll be following up next week, Sarah, Tori, everyone, with like information on how that will how that will be sent. Um, so stand by, that'll come next week in some emails, logistics emails, along with certificates for everyone. But I know I do want to leave it open for um, the judges to say any final words here. So Julie, maybe we'll start with you and then go around and then we'll wrap it up. Sure. I want to wish everyone a huge congratulations. I think um, you all did a fantastic job. I know it takes a ton of work to rehearse your presentation and, and create the pitch. Um, and it can be kind of scary to get up in front of a room of people. And, you know, with us, you, you didn't know many of us and we're kind of all around the country. So just a real um, kudos for entering the competition and um, for starting your business or, or getting your business idea together. So um, I had a couple other, other things I wanted to, to share. Um, I thought all of you did an excellent job at branding and the names that you've chosen for your businesses were really catchy. Um, there were several of them that have alliteration. So they have two words that start with the same letter. Um, and I think, I think that's a real benefit to a business to have a name that people can remember and it's easy to, to talk about and, and share with someone else because that word of mouth marketing um, can actually be really powerful. So great job on that. Um, and then the, the last thing I wanted to share is is in thinking about your businesses and whether it's this business or a business that you start in the future, um, there if you if you can figure out things on the internet, you know, and thinking about an e-commerce business, um, you can reach millions of people around the country and around the globe. And so, um, as you're thinking about businesses and, and thinking about scalability, you know, if you start a business that is a service that you're providing in person, that's very important, you know, um, helping people get their groceries, helping people clean their classrooms. Those are extremely important services um, that you're providing. But um, if you're thinking about, you know, scalability and the real potential, if you want to make a lot of money, you know, I, I think it's important as an entrepreneur to do good in the world. But also, you know, if you if you really want to make it big, think about is there a product that you can sell perhaps on the internet? And how do you reach those millions of people out there who might want your product? So I think you all have done a great job at thinking through uh, business plans and you know, how do you get your, your first business off the ground? And so um, I encourage you to continue using that entrepreneurial spirit um, and thinking about how you can scale those business ideas if you, if you wanted to make them really big. So congratulations to everyone today. Great. Thank you, Julie. Mandy, any final thoughts? 
I think that those are all excellent points. I think Julie brought up and especially being able to, to sell on a, on a global market, really, when you start using um, social media and a website. Um, and I think it's uh, inspiring for me as someone who took the risk to smart to start a small business in Appalachia and that you guys all saw a opportunity in your community and you capitalized on it. And I think that's the thing, especially here is, you know, um, the importance of not waiting around, wishing we had this, wishing we had that, but seeing something that could benefit your community and then capitalizing on it, you know, and I think for, uh, for a lot of us who want to stay in the region, this um, entrepreneurial spirit is, is much needed here. And it's inspiring to see you guys at such a young age, be able to, to execute presentations like this. And I thought they were all great. Um, and congratulations to everyone. And thanks for letting me be involved. I really enjoyed it. Thank you. Thank you. And Josanne? Um, <clears throat> I just wanted to say that I was super impressed as well. I felt like everybody had a business that um, was viable that could just could get up and go. And um, not everybody is able to uh, address a problem and um, and come up with with a with a solution that that will effectively solve that problem. So you guys did really well at that, and I wanted to to commend you for that. That's that's um, if you watch Shark Tank, there's a bunch of people on there that have just crazy things that they're trying to do because they want to do. They're not trying to solve a problem, and you guys are all trying to solve a problem, and that's really good. Um, I am a true believer that if we want to transform the economy in Eastern Kentucky, it's got to come from within. And so nurturing the entrepreneurial spirit is um, key to success. And so I'm so excited to see you guys doing that. Um, you know, I think that a lot of the things that people from the outside criticize us for or, or use to make fun of us are actually actual <clears throat> a tradition of entrepreneurship that we have here. Um, when you think about um, even things like the, the moonshiners or people are on the side of the road selling things, <clears throat> those are entrepreneurs. And we have a strong entrepreneurial um, legacy in this area and we need to reclaim that. And so I'm very, very excited to see you guys doing that. And if you <clears throat> excuse me, I'm at Hazard Community College. If you want to continue and you want any kind of a, <clears throat> assistance, I'd be happy to uh, connect with you and give you any kind of advice along the way. Just get in, in touch with me and I'd be happy to do that. Thank you so much. Um, Sandy, any final thoughts from Hazard? I know this is kind of wrapping up our Steam Pitch series this week and um, we're really grateful with Hazard and fantastic competition today. Any final thoughts? I would just like to say everyone done a great job. I'm just, I'm blown away by the creativity. It's obvious that um, they all, as Josanne said, uh, figured out a way their entrepreneurial uh, efforts was towards solving a problem. And I just, I thought it was wonderful. Congratulations to all the teams. Um, congratulations to the winners. And yes, just, this was just an awesome experience. And thank you again to our judges for uh, being with us today and just just absolutely wonderful. Great. Well, with that, uh, this will wrap up today's competition. If you have any other questions or want any other information on EntreEd, visit www.entre-ed.org um, or reach out to Laura. She would be happy to um, touch base with you on anything involving entrepreneurship across the region. So I hope everyone has a great day and I will be following up on prizes and certificates next week. Thanks everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Yes. Good job. <laughs>